All right, so we have our guest in the studio now, Mr. Nigel Mathlin. He's part of the planning committee for World AIDS Day, and that's what we're talking about today. December 1st is World AIDS Day. Good morning. It's good to have you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. So tell us a bit about yourself and what exactly you do on the committee. So today is 1st of December, um, and it's World AIDS Day, which is celebrated worldwide. Um, I'm part of a planning committee that um, was put together recently to mm -hmm. plan activities for today. I'm also an executive member of the National HIV Response. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm um, looking at like young people like yourself, how much do you do to, to help them to understand about the seriousness of, of, you know, AIDS and living, you know, living well, you know, to prevent yourself from getting AIDS? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've been involved in HIV advocacy for uh, since 1994, so okay. whatever the math is. <laughs> a long time ago. So it's been a while um, trying to do education, um, be it speaking in the media, de designing pamphlets, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I was with the uh, Grenada AIDS Foundation, which was right. very active at the time. Then um, later on, I founded an organization called Grenchap, right. which um, focused on key populations such as mm -hmm. LGBT and right. sex workers. Um, now I'm part of the national national plan to try to do education. So today actually there's an expo which starts at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. at um, Camahorn Park okay. and that goes until 6 p.m. So we there are, lots, there are going to be lots of activities there. Um, last time I checked, a day or two ago, there were at least 14 booths confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, and that is from various NGOs such as Grand Chap, Grenades, mm -hmm. um, Gino, mm -hmm. different organizations doing education to various groups, as well as government ministries and right. other other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that begins at ten o'clock this morning and yes. runs until six o'clock. Correct. Okay, great. Um, what outside of that? What do you do outside of the World AIDS Day activities? Are there other things that you get involved in from time to time, just to ensure that people are not thinking of this just around this time, but it's, you know, in our consciousness, in our minds at all times. Sure. Um, so usually there are two main testing drives every mm -hmm. year to really encourage persons to get tested for HIV. There right. is well, there's testing, the regional testing day, which is around the end of June, and that is sponsored by Scotiabank. Mm -hmm. And then there's World Days Day on, on the 1st of December. But apart from that, um, there are activities on a, on, a, on a lower scale mm -hmm. throughout the year. So um, one of the activities right now, right now that's happening, for instance, is piloting a few mm -hmm. sites okay. um, to do rapid, to introduce rapid okay. testing. So traditionally, um, for the last, well, forever, <laughs> <laughs> um, when persons get, come to get tested, um, normally a blood sample is drawn, and then in a couple of weeks, you get a call to let you know to come in to get to your HIV results. However, um, rapid testing is now being piloted. I was being I was trained as one of the testers in that mm. program as well. So there are four sites. Um, mm. There is the St. George's Medical Center, that's on Melville Street, Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, mm -hmm. NIDCO, which is at the General Hospital, right. and Grenchap on Old Ford Road. Mm -hmm. And these four sites are piloting rapid testing where we can actually do that blood draw and provide results to you in 20 minutes. Okay. So while we are <coughs> waiting for that 20 minutes, we also mm -hmm. have a chat with the client about different r risks that may, they have may, may mm -hmm. have been exposed to, and um, explain to them about the test. Explain, you know, have you really thought about if this test comes back HIV positive? Yeah. What is the next step? I've ha who are you going to be able to talk to about this? Um, how do you think you'll be able to handle that news? And if the test comes back negative, then of course the um, emphasis is on ensuring that you continue to reduce your mm -hmm. risk and remain negative. Right. Um, and there are various stakeholders, various organizations plan their own activities throughout mm -hmm. the year as well. Mm -hmm. Now that there's a national coordinating uh, mechanism back on back on track now, we're really trying to bring everybody together again to coordinate acti activities. So we're trying to have, um, in 2018, at least four major activities for, um, for the year. Right. So apart from the testing day in June and World Aids Day, we want to have at least two other activities, and hopefully that goes on. 
So at, at the, the, the Health Expo at Camon Park today, but people be tested, of course. Yes, at, testing okay. will be available today. Um, actually, in the lead up to World AIDS Day, um, there has been testing island wide. Mm -hmm. So we've been posting schedules. Um, there has been test um, both at business places as well in various communities. There was one at Tam CC as well. There was one at Tam CC. There was um, one at the port. Um, there was telescope in St. Andrew, Guov, the Cetez bus station, mm -hmm. um, and just various sites, um, one, two. Um, so we're trying different, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to target, um, do different targeting this year to make sure that we reach persons. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, it's important for everybody to get tested, but we realize that um, it's always been an issue for men to come forward to access mm -hmm. health. You know, mm -hmm. women are much more likely to get checks whenever any little thing comes up, but okay. men typically wait until they're very sick and then in the hospital and then have mm -hmm. a test and realize that something is very wrong. Yeah. So even though it's important for everybody to get tested and women have been getting tested over the years, yeah. we're really focusing on men this year to mm -hmm. really try to ensure that more men come out to get tested. Yeah. Um, over the years, um, when you look at the figures in comparing the number of women compared to men um, mm -hmm. that come to get tested. There are twice as many women that get compared tested for HIV every year as compared to men. However, there are twice as many men who are actually diagnosed positive as compared to women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we really need to encourage that our men come forward to get yeah, tested. Right. So the tests that were done in lead up to World AIDS, they, yes. were they rapid testing or? or mm, did they no, those were regular methods. tests. Um, right. The reason for that is um, it's much quicker to just take a quick blood draw mm -hmm. um, and then move on to the next client right. um, and then deliver the results mm -hmm. to the client afterwards as opposed to the rapid testing where it's really you deal with one client at a time. Okay. So you do the blood draw, wait right. for the 20 minutes and then yeah. deliver the result and then move on to the next person. And so, so in the uh, today it will also be the traditional method today because it will be the regular too method. many people so correct oh, okay but even after today um you know a lot of persons have been messaging um <clears throat> based on the um ads that we've been putting out you know uh -huh. i can't make it today so you know where can i get tested but right. tested is actually available year round and if you access it through um the public health care system it is Testing is free of cost. Right. Um, if you do it, you can do it through your private doctor as well. But of course, your private doctor will charge a fee. Mm -hmm. But testing is available year round. It's mm -hmm. not just on the days that we advertise it. So oh, if you're okay. not able to able to make it today for whatever mm -hmm. reason, then you can go into your nearest health center or the sites that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier or NIDCO at the hospital. Right. So and, and the sites that you mentioned. Yes. Um, the, for the rapid testing, those of course they're free as well. Yes. The rapid so, testing. So. Um, Grenada Planned Parenthood Association mm -hmm. may charge a service fee, uh -huh. but I th but the other sites, as far as I know, mm -hmm. for now, um, that will be available free of cost. Okay, right, great. Um, I want to go back to the point you made about you know more, more women getting tested and all that, but men being diagnosed. What what do you think we can do? How how else can we reach men so that they can <laughs> understand? Look, this is for your own good. Yeah, you might be afraid, but the thing is, if you actually do something in the early stages then there is no need for regret yes later on but mm -hmm. still i guess they just don't think like that yeah mm -hmm. well that's a million dollar question <laughs> and it's not just um i mean this is not just an mm -hmm. hiv issue uh, mm -hmm. men just do you know they yeah. just figure that you're you're macho and you don't you, you don't need to see a doctor because it's going to take care of itself or i can bear the pain or yeah. whatever it is that's going on so um that's not an hiv specific issue it's mm -hmm. a general men's health issue um the one of the goals for 2030 worldwide is mm -hmm. it's called the 1990 goals um it's the goal is really that 90% of persons who are living with HIV have mm -hmm. been tested and, that, and know their status. Right. That 90% of persons who are diagnosed positive are accessing treatment. Mm -hmm. And also that 90% of persons who are accessing treatment have achieved and are maintaining an undetectable viral load. Oh, okay. Um, the Caribbean region is a bit falling short in terms mm -hmm. of reaching those goals so okay. we really need to ensure that our efforts are stepped up mm -hmm. um, both in terms of public education as well as you know the actual public health practitioners ensuring that um, some sensitization is done to mm -hmm. 
ensure that persons feel comfortable right. in actually coming forward to access the care because mm-hmm. um, you know HIV has been around for a very long time but there's still a lot of stigma yeah. around it and even though the medication has and, and treatment has come a very long way mm-hmm. um, where that first clients can take one pill a day basically and live a regular lifespan <laughs> yeah. a, a normal healthy life but there's still this stigma that um, is persistent mm-hmm. from you know, decades ago when the treatment was not at that stage yeah. and HIV at one time it was a death sentence but it's no longer a death sentence and we really need to do a lot of public education to ensure mm-hmm. that this negative stigma is um, eliminated. Okay. Um, and persons, you know, there are different, to- there are different s- sorts of stigma that, that persons can, um, can experience mm-hmm. and all of these forms of stigma um, do negatively ac- affect persons coming forward for testing as well as you know in terms of if you're tested positive um mm-hmm. ensuring that you're accessing your medication and taking your medication on time and so yeah. on so one of the things is perceived stigma mm-hmm. y- you know you you think that um oh you know the persons in the health center are not confidential or you know <laughs> i don't want to know that i am hiv positive um you know d- I don't even want to do the test. I don't want to come forward to access testing in the first case. Um, perceived stigma prevents persons from coming forward to get tested. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's experienced stigma where, you know, these perceptions that you have actually are acted out and, and we call mm-hmm. that discrimination. So yeah. if some, if, so for example, um, you know, somebody might be tested positive um, when they go to a new job for instance and then they're tested positive and then they find out that they mm-hmm. can't get the job because of that or you go to um, you want some life insurance or health insurance for instance right. and you have a, you have an, a medical test and then you're denied insurance for mm-hmm. instance because again your test came back positive mm-hmm. um, or it can be real community it can be real discrimination in your community where persons are yeah. very scornful um, towards you, not only you, but your family, um, persons that you try to have a relationship with. Um, and there's just all mm-hmm. of this discrimination that is acted out towards people, which leads to the third one, which is internalized stigma, um, where, you know, you feel that you're not as good as everybody else yeah. and you get depressed and you don't take care of yourself and you get stressed out and you don't eat properly and mm-hmm. all of those things and you don't even access your medication you don't you exactly. don't take your medication properly because you're just so depressed and you and you lose the fight to will uh, yeah. to live mm-hmm. so all of these forms of stigma are very prevalent and okay. the only way to really um i mean you asked the question earlier how can we encourage persons mm-hmm. to actually get tested it's not just a matter of putting out an ad and say come out and get tested yeah um there are really lots of <laughs> there are lots of things in our culture and in our society that um needs to be dealt with internally mm-hmm. um so that people really feel comfortable to come forward to get tested at mm-hmm. least the tests are available free of cost mm-hmm. or in the few places that do charge it's a minimal cost so in terms of there's no financial access Uh, barrier to getting tested Um, but it's really for persons to take up the opportunity to come forward Mm -hmm. and access the services that are being provided right so i want to go back to a point you made earlier when for the for the like the rapid testing Mm -hmm. while you know they're waiting on the 20 minutes um then you'd ask them you know they've ever thought about what if the thing comes back yeah. negative, so if it's positive, mm-hmm. if it's um, they, there's no AIDS, they're fine. But in the event that it is positive, yeah. now what what is the next step? Because you you you're delivering that news to that person, mm-hmm. so you're the first point of contact. How yeah. it means that the person you have to be trained to a particular level to yes. deal with somebody who might seem to be going temporarily <laughs> <laughs> and completely insane. Yeah, um, and. The reaction varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. So regardless of how educated somebody is about HIV, Mm -hmm. there's probably nothing that can really prepare you for getting that result that speaks to you directly, that you are HIV positive. So um, there are a range of reactions. Some persons are 
angry, some people get silent, some people don't want to talk and you know, they said they will come back later and talk and, and talk to you. Um, but each client really has to be dealt with individually. Um, so, you know, which is why that conversation actually starts before yeah. we, we deliver the result. Yeah. With the delayed testing, which is being provided today, and generally speaking, at least, you know, the person has a few weeks to think about it. So, yeah. so that's, um, that's a bit easier to deal with, you know. But we do explain that even if it is that somebody is um, diagnosed positive, mm -hmm. so what the next steps are? What the next steps are? Mm -hmm. So the test that we do, um, it's an HIV test. It tests for HIV antibodies in the mm -hmm. blood. So it's an it's either a yes or a no. It's like pregnancy. You can't right. be almost pregnant. <laughs> you're either pregnant or you're not. So in the same way, the test that we do says, okay, it's either detecting HIV antibodies or not, which mm -hmm. would indicate that there is an, there's an infection or not. Right. If a test comes up positive, then the person is referred to NIDCO, that's the National Infectious Disease Control Unit mm -hmm. at the Ministry of Health. Um, and they are responsible for the care and treatment of persons living with HIV. Right. They would re um, recommend some further tests to be done. And there are two main tests. Um, there's the viral load, which actually measures how much of the virus is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And then there's the CD4 count, which measures basically the level that your immune system is working at. So HIV takes a very long time to progress in somebody's body. Typically speaking, persons can be infected and live perfectly with no symptoms five, six years or more without exhibiting any symptoms without getting sick at all. But then that's a danger if they come into contact with different people. Correct. Um, but while the H while HIV is in your body, it slowly the level of the virus slowly increases, and as the level of the virus increases, it breaks down your immune system gradually. And when your immune system gets to a certain level, that is when your body really gets. Um, more susceptible to getting illnesses. So mm -hmm. a simple cold might turn into pneumonia or some, something serious. Mm -hmm. And there are other illnesses that um, normally your body would be able to take care of yeah. um, regularly, um, but they that can turn into, se in, into serious illnesses. So um, the CD4 count is the level that your immune system is at. And when your immune system gets to a certain level, um, before it gets too serious, then the client is prescribed medication, right. which is typically one ability. <coughs> right. um, so again, not everybody that is tested positive is put on medication right away. Is um, that so? Yeah, but once, because when if your CD, if your immune system is still operating fine, then really your body can still take care of itself. At least th that's the guidelines that we, the WHO guidelines that mm -hmm. we are following right now. Um, in some other countries, persons are put on medication as soon as they're diagnosed. But I think in most countries, mm -hmm. um, that, that is not the case. Okay. Once somebody is, once po somebody starts their medication, you have to stay on that medication for the rest of your life. Um, one pill a day. Mm -hmm. And um, typically speaking, the client would achieve an undetectable viral load within a few months time. So what that means is once you start the medication and you take it consistently, the level of the virus would be reduced gradually in your blood okay. until um, there comes a time when your viral load test is done and there's so little of the virus in your system that the test comes up undetectable. Um, and once the client, you no, know, you're not cured of HIV, the HIV mm -hmm. is still in your body, um, but it's lying dormant in your brain and in different cells of your body. But in terms of the amount of virus in your blood, right. um, it's zero, virtually zero. And once somebody achieves and maintains an undetectable viral load, then um, the risk of transmission, even if that person has unprotected sex, is, well, all of the recent studies that have been done mm -hmm. shows that the risk of sexual transmission is zero. Okay. So that is why it's important for persons mm -hmm. to get tested mm -hmm. and persons who know this is to get on the medication. Okay. Um, because condom use is always, that's where it starts. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of persons 
again with this, regarding the stigma regarding persons living with HIV, mm -hmm. there's always this fear of being around somebody, or there's quite often this fear of being around somebody living with HIV. Right. Oh, you know, sup suppose they get a cut, and suppose this, and suppose that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the same person that is asking you all of these questions and is being fearful about or being around persons with HIV at the same time is still having unprotected sex <laughs> and unprotected sex is what is really the highest risk factor <laughs> um, a lot of the times we are in relationships with persons and we we think that you know you know somebody for a few weeks or a few months or a new few years so you know the person so you feel comfortable and then you stop using condoms mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of persons who have um, who have contracted HIV in that way because knowing somebody is not going to <laughs> knowing somebody not um, proof, yeah. doesn't mean that you know what their health status is it doesn't yeah. mean that they even know their own health status because there are a lot of persons that do not know that they're HIV positive because they have not been tested mm -hmm. so we um, we recommend that even if you are in a monogamous relationship mm -hmm. and both of you are faithful to each other, which is a whole topic by itself <laughs> because, you know, you can't put your head on the block for anybody. But even if both of you are faithful to, to each other, you need to ensure that both of you get tested and ensure that both of you are negative mm -hmm. and then get tested, you know, three to six months later um, after what we call the window period, um, get tested again. And once that second test comes up, negative then you can start having that conversation about yeah. if it is that you're going to stop using protection but just knowing somebody for a few months or knowing somebody for a couple of years that doesn't mean that mm. there's no risk of hiv transmission okay so what what exactly will be done today a number of booths will be there what people come along there what can we expect yes so the activities as i said start about 10 30 mm -hmm. um sorry 10 o'clock o'clock yeah um i think there's an opening ceremony scheduled for around 10 30 this morning okay a formal opening ceremony um but there are going to be various booths so um gino is going to be talking about domestic violence mm -hmm. um you know so domestic violence is also a risk factor again because in mm -hmm. if you're in a relationship um, or in any sort of um, domestic relationship, there's, mm -hmm. there's there's very often a power imbalance, yeah. and again, um, condom negotiation, the use of condoms is a difficult thing because. Mm -hmm. You're in a relationship, the man normally wields the power, yeah. and me many times women want, want to use a condom, and they may even think or know that um, their partner is not being faithful to them, but they feel powerless mm -hmm. to actually negotiate that condom use. Um, so domestic violence is mm -hmm. definitely a huge driving factor. Right. Um, for, for HIV. So, as I said, was sp sp speaking about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, I think the mental home is going to be talking about mental health. Okay. Grenades is going to, which is a local NGO, is going to be talking about, you know, access to care mm -hmm. and persons living with HIV um, and general HIV education. Right. Um, Grenchap, which is an organization that I had co-founded, but I'm no longer directly mm -hmm. associated with. Um, they will be dealing with issues of gender, sexual, sexuality, right. um, gender identity, um, providing education on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the National Health Insurance is going to be there okay. speaking about that upcoming um, right. service that is going to be provided. Um, Ministry of Youth, uh, Ministry of Health, of course. Mm -hmm. There's going to be testing, and not just HIV testing, but there will be blood tests available, sugar, okay. breast examinations, um, and general health checks. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. all of this is going to be provided free of cost to That's persons. So um, the Ministry of Education has organized for a couple school groups to come down as well. So the education is going to be tailored to mm -hmm. all age groups. Okay. Um, there are a few local entertainers who <laughs> have promised that they're going to be coming down and sharing their talents with us throughout okay. the day. <laughs> so there's a stage, um, PA system, yeah. and um, quite a few. I don't remember, I'm sorry, off the top of my head, mm -hmm. which ones have come down. But right. um, I, I, at least five of them have promised um, mm -hmm. to come down 
and make little performances okay. or at least um, share in the day's proceedings. I guess when we get there, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Um, well, as it is for today, um, I would say we'll do today. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to take advantage of the opportunity which is available today to, to, to get these tests, um, whether it's yourself and your partner, if you have a partner, mm -hmm. um, encourage your colleagues at work in, uh, as well to come down yeah. to um, Camahorn Park and uh, the stigma, you know, as a community, we really need to, um, you know, persons are living with HIV mm -hmm. all around us. Uh, many of the times we don't know mm -hmm. who is HIV positive and who is HIV negative. And at the end of the day, regardless of your political leanings, your religion, your sexuality, your race, your age, your occupation, it doesn't matter. HIV does not discriminate. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, as a, as a society, we really need to be more embracing of persons around yeah. us and, uh, um, you know, n not give in to the divisive messages which yeah. uh, a lot of persons are trying to bring in for their for, for own selfish reasons mm -hmm. from, from, from all sides. But, you know, we really need to get back to this community spirit mm -hmm. um, and accept our colleagues um, and support each other because of course yeah, um, it, it's not this it's not just our it's not just our physical health but also our mental health mm -hmm. which is something which is not addressed very much in yeah. Grenada um, and persons need that support everybody needs support of for course. whatever reason whether it's HIV or depression mm -hmm. or whatever lots reason. of other things so mm -hmm. um, that would be my main message to just support each other and mm -hmm. come down and access the services that we have today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So we've been speaking with Mr. Nigel Matlin. He's part of the planning committee for World AIDS Day. A lot of information given there, of course, people would need the support. There's no need for a stigma and discrimination at this time. But unfortunately, we know that still happens. And that is what prevents a lot of people from coming out and doing the things that they know they're supposed to do just to, you know, know their status or if they are HIV positive to ensure that they protect themselves going forward as much as possible so that they can live as normal a life as possible. So this morning, an expo from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There'll be an official opening around 10, 10 30 day. It's at Camahorn Park and there'll be a number of booths there. So you can go down there and of course do your tests, which you will receive the results for in a few weeks. That's about two weeks or so, roughly. It two to three weeks? It depends. We will call the clients when, when right. the test results are ready. Already. Okay, yeah. great. So, of course, go and access the service. It is free. And also, yeah, he has also mentioned that they're doing the piloting for the rapid testing. That is also available. But for today, you can go down to the Camerhorn Park and take advantage of this opportunity, especially if you reside or you work in the Grandlands area. So, it will be very easy for you to just head over to the Camerhorn Park from anywhere between 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock today. Okay, so here's where we come to the end of the program for today and indeed for the week. And as I mentioned earlier, we will have no spice morning on Monday. There'll be a rebroadcast of the tribute to our colleague Trevor Thwaites who died recently and he will be buried on Monday. So we will see you again very soon. You're watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.